Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Last Sunday, Nazip preached basically that uh, God created us for His joy. Oh. The purpose of God for us is for His joy. And today, I'm going to speak about uh, that God created family for His joy, for His purpose. And God created family because He has a beautiful purpose to have relationship with His kids. And you are children of God. And you have a huge privilege to be part of the family of God. And today we're going to learn a little bit more or remind ourselves about how it's amazing to be part of this family. And here you have people from different nations, but you are one family. And one day, all of us will be together. And just I want you to go for someone from another country that is not your country and say to this person, I love you, brother, or I love you, sister. Because you need to practice it from now on. Go to someone from the first nation and say it. <laughs> You see how it's amazing. If you are a little I know that you're going to spend a long time in hugging each other and speaking speak to each other. It's amazing when you have this sense that God called us to be one, to be together, and to work together as a family. And in the Bible, it says, I'm divided. And you are the branch. John 15, 5. And uh, in Romans 12, 5 it says, Christ makes us one body connected to each other. It's, it's a wonderful the way that God created us. When he created the first family, the Bible starts with a, a, a married party with Adam and Eve and Auntie who is a pastor, who is Jesus and his church. He's right. And it, it is all about your family, from the beginning to the end of the Bible. And God created us to live in perfect unity, to have a wonderful relationship with each other. And the sin came and broke it. And we live in today, a life that in some time is you broke each other, you have a, you feel offended. No, you have difficult relationships. But it wasn't the first original design, it wasn't the, the original design to live like that. But it was to live in harmony, in love, in kindness, in care for one another. And Jesus came and gave himself on the cross to reconcile us again with himself and with one another. Reconcile us, bring us together to understand one another with our difference, with our brokenness, but he wants us to be family, to care for one another and looking for one another in every aspect of our life. God is love. He treasures relationships. His very nature is relational. And he identifies himself in family terms, terms, Father, Son, and the Spirit. The Trinity is God's relationship to himself. God wants to share his love relationship with us. One day the desire of Jesus Christ, once he expressed his, his desire, and he said, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me, loved me before the creation of the world. I want my children to be with me, to see my glory, to take part of this glory, to have this wonderful relationship of love with me, with the Father, with the Holy Spirit. 
all of them to be involved in this relationship, in this intimacy, in this wonderful fellowship. God wants us. And sometimes we live our lives with a lot of difficult relationships and uh, behavior, attitudes that it doesn't worship or glorify God. And God created us as a family for his glory. Mm -hmm. And you need to glorify, you need to understand that you are different, but you need to love one another. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you place our faith in Christ, God becomes our father. He becomes, and we becomes his children. Every human being was created by God, but not everyone is a child of God. The only way to get it in God's family is by being born again into it. God has given us the privilege of being born again so that we are now members of God's own family. The invitation to be part of God's family is universal. But there is one condition, faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, you are all my children. Sorry, you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Has the only way, one way to be children of God, to be part of his family, is to accept Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. When you confess, you become automatically part of this family. And now you go to learn how to grow in our relationship with one another. What is more important? Is the natural or the spiritual? The spiritual. Based on your answer, I want to say something that maybe you say, Ooh, so strong. Your spiritual family is even more important than your physical family because it will last forever. Amen. Our families is a blessing. Our family on earth are wonderful gifts from God, but they are temporary. On the other hand, our spiritual family will continue throughout eternity. Sometimes we prioritize more our earthly family than our spiritual family. But actually, it's important our natural, our earthly family is important. We need to give time, we need to express love, we need to be together, we need to, to uh, love each other very much and care for one another, but we cannot live a part of our spiritual family. Since you are his child, everything he has belongs to you. How would he privilege it is? Everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to you. All the authority, all power, all majesty, all glory that Jesus has belongs to us. Because he said that you, you are heirs of God and co heirs with Jesus. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, he says that you are, he is the force among many brothers and sisters. In John 3, 16, he says that he is the only son of God. But now in Romans chapter 8, 29, he says he is the first among many. And it's so huge privilege to be brother of Jesus. He's our Lord, but he's our brother as well. And he cared for us. The Bible says that he seated on the right hand of, of the Father and the seed for us. Every day he see you and say, Dad, look at that one. Belong to me. Look at that one. It's not so strong, but he'll be. Because he has the mark of my blood. He received me as a saving Lord. And he'll be the person that I created him to be. I, he'll, she'll be the, the woman that I created her to be. God always see us 
and he trusts in us and he knows that you go to fulfill his purpose. And one of the most beautiful purpose of God is that you act and you move and you love each other as a family. The New Testament gives great emphasis to our rich inheritance. Inheritance. It tells us, my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19. And sometimes in, in, in our lives we face difficulties because you do wrong. Instead to come to the presence of God, to the place of adoration, to praise his name, to exalt him, we start to look in our problems, at our problems, like Eva said, and our problem becomes so big that you forget to come to the presence of God. It's like our problems is like a shadow. If I mean a little bit farther from the light, my shadow will grow. And can you imagine that my shadow is my problems? As far from Jesus I am, more my problems will be big, bigger and bigger and bigger. But when I come under the light, the shadow disappears. I need to be with my life in the presence of Jesus always. We face problems, difficult relationship, because you, you are not uh, keep ourselves under the light, under Jesus' control. Under Jesus' authority, under Jesus' love. And sometimes when you try to do by ourselves, by our strength, we fail. And you mess up our relationships. We will be with God forever and we will be completely changed to be like Christ. We will be freed from our pain death and suffering we will share in Christ's glory. This is our future. No matter what you are facing now, your future is to be there. Share the glory of Jesus Christ. In a position of authority. In complete adoration. Without any pain. Without any problem, but just the presence of the Lord forever. God created us since the beginning for His purpose. For one day, for us to come as a family, people from many different nations speak one language before God the language of love. God has reserved a priceless inheritance for His children. It is kept in heaven for you, pure and underfilled, beyond the reach of change and decay. This means that your eternal inheritance is priceless, pure, permanent, and protected. No one can take it from you. Jesus says that no one can take you from his hand. No present, no future, no, no uh, high, no, no death. Nothing can separate us from him. You are in him, but you have to decide. Jesus, I want you. I need you. I decide to be in your presence 24-7. Every single time, I want to worship you. I want to adore you. I want to lift your name on high, Lord. I don't accept to live our life we see like waves, ups and downs. I decide to live my life in complete dependence of you. I put you first in my life. You are my priority. It's not about me, it's about you. Everything is coming from you, through you, to you. It's not about me. I'm just here as a child of God to serve you, to glorify your name, to exalt you all the time in my life. And this is what I desire. This is what I decided to do. From now on, the Lord, I don't accept to live a life with weakness, in the way that everything offended me, everything I mean down. I decide to believe in 
that with you is possible. With you, I can overcome everything. Live your spiritual life with passion. Be passionate for Jesus. <coughs> Include him in your conversation. Include Jesus in your relationships. Put him in everything that you're going to do. Ask him what you are thinking to do, if he is good or not. Share with him. Make him your Lord. Don't do anything before asking Jesus if it's good or not. Share with Jesus every aspect of your life. All the desire, all the failure, all the, the, the dreams that you have. Share everything. Decide to put him first in your life in everything. Spend time in the presence of God. Life is great test and privilege. The Bible says, Jesus and the people he makes holy all belong to the same family. That is why he isn't ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Hebrews 2, 11. Jesus called you, my brother. Hey, it's a really privilege. God called you, my brother. My sister, I'm with you always. I never forsake you. I never leave you alone. <coughs> when you think that you are alone because your problem is so big, it's this moment that Jesus carries you in his arm and say, my child, I'm with you. I'm training you to be stronger. It's like in my, in my country, when the father see the, the boy fell on the host, the, the, the knee, what the father usually says, stand up, man. <laughs> Go to play football. <laughs> Go to do that. Usually the, the, the mothers come and try to protect it, and the yes. kids, kids cry. With the father, the, 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 the boy cry and say, come on, you are man. Stand up. And God sometimes do it with us. He fell. He is a father and say, my son, stand up. Keep going. I'm here. I'm here. Has a culture in indigenous tribes that he, he introduced the boy to be a man in some very, very uh, strange way. He take the, the, the boy to the jungle and leave the jungle, the, the, the boy with the, the uh, uh, blindfold, blindfold, blind, blindfold, leave it there and make noises, different noises during the night and leave the boy there alone. And the boy has to be there, blindfold with his hands tied on the back. But the father come in silence and be close to him. But in his mind, he's alone. But the father is there to protect. And sometimes God does this kind of thing with us. You think that, oh, I'm alone, I'm afraid. And God is just close to you and say, uh-uh, I'm here. And when the day comes out, the boy open and say, wow. I did it. I'm a strong man. But the father was there. We cannot do anything by ourselves, brothers and sisters. We do because Jesus is there for us all the time. He holds us by our hands and says, Come on, my child. I know, I believe, I trust, I know that you go to fulfill my purpose. No matter, brothers, what you face. Jesus never forsake you. Amen. Love. Love is something that is so important for us to understand what love means. No matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm in bankruptcy without love. If you don't have love, you are in bankruptcy. 
you need it. Bank? Bankrupt. Yeah, you understood me. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are the best translator. <laughs> Love means living the way God's commanded us to live. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is this, live a life of love. Second John 1, 6. Because God is love, the most important lesson he wants you to learn on earth is how to love. How to love. And one thing, one, one day I, I met someone and came to me in the church and said, oh, no one loved me. I said, good. God didn't create you to be loved. He created you and called you to love. But he loved you. And it's not. And when you love, when you obey God and start to love people, you will be loved by everyone. Everyone like and love to be close to one that love people. Because everyone wants to be loved. We have this need in us. God created us with this need to be loved. But in action, the goal is love. And when you give it, you receive it. As much you give it, more you receive. As much you love it, more love it will be. It's something amazing. But you are here. No one loves me. Start to love. And you see the difference. Start to love people. Start to build a relationship with people. It started to look at them as a special people, as a nice people, no matter if they are not, but you can transform them by your love. If they want to change my wife in any area of her life, I need to change my <coughs> life first. I need to express love, attention, respect, honor, and she'll change it by the love, because the love constrains us. Love changes us. Love can conquer and everything. Love is the foundation of every command he has given us. We should give special attention to those who are in the family of believers. Let's care for one another. Let's look well for one another. Let's try our best to be a blessing for one another. Why does God insist that we give special love and attention to others believers? Because God wants his family to be known for its love more than anything else. People outside will desire to come here because they will see the love that you love each other. The way that you care for one another. Yesterday we heard testimony here from people outside of this church. They came here and they said, I felt the love of God, the love of everyone here so strong in my life like never before. If you come to this church, one thing that you need to learn is how to love. To care for one another, really. Not in theory, but in the practical way. The way that God will be glorified. If you don't feel loved here, please tell us. Because we want to express love to you. We want to care for you. We want to make you feel special. Jesus said, your strong love for each other will prove to the world that you are my disciples. John 13:35. How to prove that you are a child of God, that you are children of God, through love, through the way that you love one another. We will enjoy God's family forever, but in force we need to practice loving each other now. With all our brokenness, no one of us are, are perfect, but we can learn throughout fellowship. Love needs to be our greatest aim. Guys, we really need you to decide 
I go to express God's love in such a way that everyone is going to feel. And the, it's the most beautiful thing is when you start to love people, you decide to approach it, to build a relationship, to hear people, to listen to them, to hug them, to invite them to your house. And now is something that I want to talk here. Once I, I, I asked the uh, English guy, why so many coffees in, in everywhere in England? Uh, coffee shops in, in everywhere in England. They say because we prefer to meet people in the cafes than to take them home. Mm -hmm. Because we want our privacy. Privacy? Privacy. privacy. But Jesus, in our lives, invite people to your house when you want to talk, when you want to share, want to, when you want to have fellowship, invite them to your house. Crazy, this uh, uh, atmosphere of family. My house is your house. If you knock the door anytime in my house, if I'm there, you are very welcome. You don't need to call me or ask when you can receive me. I can receive you now. Because I'm, my house belongs to Jesus. This is a place to receive people, to spend time with people. And we need as a Christian to be open for everyone. Here, in some times, in some times I desire to go in someone's house. But I didn't go to check if I can go or not. But in Jesus' culture, you could be free. Just to call, are you at home? Okay, I'm going there to eat with you. <laughs> ah, that doesn't have food. Okay, you will eat uh, egg. <laughs> I, I, I'll take the eggs. And you fry the eggs and we will eat with something else. <laughs> yes. It's to be like that, brothers and sisters. You are family. You are family. You love each other. You care for one another. You are special for me. Okay? And you, you, you have this freedom to say, I'm sorry, I don't have any food. But can I take it? And we eat together. <coughs> Why you don't share our heart with one another? Because you are afraid to be judged. What the people you say? God says relationships are what life is all about. Love God and love people. Love God and love people. This is the, the slogan of our church. Love God and love people. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart. This is the fourth and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10, 27. Another reason God tells us to make love our top priority is that it is eternal. These three things continue forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of this is love. Love will remain forever. We love here, we love in heaven. In heaven, you don't need a faith. In heaven, you don't have hope. You don't need hope. But love is still forever. It's the most important thing, this love. And we need to learn it. We can conquer the world through love. If you love the way that Jesus teach us, we can conquered the world. The force, the, 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 the early church, they conquered the, that generation through love. The way that they lived it. They, they were so attractive that everyone come and say, I want to be part of this. I want to be part of this community. Sometimes it's not like that. But because you are behaving the wrong way, you are disobedient to Jesus Christ. You are not living the way that Jesus called us to live. It. You are rebels. You are people that 
move by ourselves. We try to do everything by our strength in my way. It's my culture, in the way that I know, and I go to live like that. And Jesus says, it's not your way, it's my way. It's about love. It's about to deny yourselves. It's about to die for yourselves and leave me to be your Lord, your God, your King. Sometimes we think, but in the right way, we don't do. You must love one another. Love will last forever. In our final moments, we all realize that relationships are what life is all about. <coughs> In our last moment, you don't ask anyone to bring your beautiful watch, your Ferrari, your Jaguar, Jaguar? No, you don't. You say, bring my mom, bring my brother, bring my wife, bring my children. Because this is what is really is important. Guys, you can do whatever you can do. You can catch whatever you can get. But in the end of your life, what matters is how many people you blessed. How many people you expressed in love. And they will remember you as a man and a woman of God that left a legacy of love. They will see Jesus in you through the way that you love, express love. One of the ways God measures spiritual maturity is by the quality of our relationships. The way that you have your relationship with your brothers and sisters in the church, it shows <coughs> your maturity. You are a mature Christian, relate with everyone in a nice way in good way, without to be offended, or to be separated from, from the, the relationship, from the fellowship. <coughs> Just because some, the pastor didn't spoke to you, or someone didn't hug you, or someone didn't give you attention, and you close yourselves, and say, oh, I don't want to be anymore in this church because people don't express love to me. Jesus said, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of this, 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 who are members of my family, you did it to me. Love <coughs> is to be kind for everyone, to take it, and pay attention for everyone, to help everyone. The only thing that counts is faith express itself through love. If you don't believe, if you don't trust God, and if you don't love, you need to think about that. And come back to the track. Come back to align your heart with God's heart. Love and believe is something powerful. Because when you believe, when you, you have faith, you can overcome everything. And when you love, you break every resistance in people's heart or behavior. The best express of love is time. The best expression of love is time. Time is your most precious gift because you only have a certain amount of it. You can make more money, but you cannot make more time. Mm -hmm. Your time is your life. That is why the greatest gift you can give someone is your time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you are so busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. And someone once said that busy means being under Satan yoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, can you imagine why you are so busy? Because the enemy creates situation for us to be so busy to don't have time to each other, to spend time with our children, to spend time with our wives, 
to spend time with my brothers and sisters. I'm so busy. And he created it. So many. The system of this world destroy us, destroy our relationships. Because you don't have time. You work, you do something in more, 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 more. The best way to spell love is T I M E. Time. Give your time. Give your ear. God says, for us husbands, love your wives. And we think that when you are loved by. Sorry. God says, for us husbands, love your wives. And we think, as a husband, that we are loving by the provision of the needs. When you provide everything, you express love. This is our conception. But the conception of God, he wants us. And uh, our wives, our kids, what they want is our eyes, our ears, our time, our attention, our presence, our focus, our honor, our respect. Nothing can take the place of that. What people need is not think. It's not things. What people, our kids need is not presence. It's our presence. What our kids need is, is not that they, they last mobile, but it's our hugs and kisses and attention and play together and laugh together. For how long time as a father here, you don't sit with your kids to create a toy together from scratch? It's easy. Go there, buy your toy. And the toys today is only mobile. If you give the last mobile, that's all. And the mobile take your children from you. Probe your kids. They don't have attention for you. And whatever you do or say doesn't mean anything for them anymore. Because the eyes is for the mobile. You make a huge mistake when you don't know how to say no. Or it's not the time for that. We need to come back for the principles of the Bible, guys. With love, but to rethink again the way that you are living. Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone. Never tell your neighbor to wait until tomorrow if you can help them now. One thing last week, uh, I need to destroy a trunk, tree, trunk, that I need to, to do some floor in my gazebo in the back garden. But uh, I, didn't, I couldn't do it by myself. And I invited Saul and uh, Nancy came together and they did a great job. Because I was needing on Sunday afternoon. Because Monday, the guy came to do the floor, and if that trunk was there, were there, he couldn't do the job. But they understood it, this principle, and they came and helped me. And I was so happy, because then everything worked right. And sometimes it's that. Don't live for tomorrow when your brothers or sisters need you now. Why is now the best time to express love? Because you don't know how long you will have the opportunity. Give now all the kisses, all hugs that you can for the ones that you love. It's now, give the kiss and hugs and pay attention, spend time together and laugh together. You see, as a family, sometimes we are on the table and suddenly one of your kids drop a cup of juice on the, the, the table. What's your reaction? Stop the boy. Pay attention. Instead, to laugh at him. 
Because what is seen, but what is important is people. What matter is in who? It's our time together, we laugh at each, at each other. We enjoy each other, company. <coughs> we are created. Church are a place to belong. We are created for community, passionate for fellowship and formed for family. And none of us can fulfill God's purpose by ourselves. In Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We are one body. In Christ, the church is a body, not a building, an organism, not an organization. You need to understand it. You and me, you are the church. It's not the beauty. You are an organism that works together. You are members one of one another. If your finger is cut off, all the body will feel the pain. And if you fever, whatever. In the same way, if one is blessed, all the body will receive the blessing as well. Once I, 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 I will share with our pastor in Brazil. Pastor, pray for us. You are feel uh, a very strong moment in our life, in difficult in this in this area. And say, okay, let's pray. And he prayed. The full month we went in holiday. And when you came back, he said, wow, you disappeared. It's now, yes, we went in holiday. He said, yes, funny. When you need it, you come and ask for prayer. When you go on holiday, you don't share. <laughs> for us to enjoy that you are having a nice time. Brothers and sisters, it's so important for you. You are not controlling people here. You are free to do whatever you want. And God gives you the same freedom. But our choice has consequences. But one thing that I want to encourage you, when you go on holiday, tell us. Pastors, I'm going holiday to this place because you can pray for you. You can cover you in prayer. Mm. You go in protection, under protection. Mm. Share your blessings. Share your difficulties with us because you can pray for you. But share your blessings as well. This is a body. This is the family of God. You care for one another. You need to know what's going on with one another. You are created for a specific purpose, but you will miss this purpose of your life if you are not attached to a living local church. You discover your purpose in life through your relationship with others. The person who says, I don't need the church either is either arrogant or ignorant. The church is so significant that Jesus died on the cross for it. For it. Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. The Bible calls the church the bride of Christ and the body of Christ. Can you imagine say to Jesus, I love you, but I don't like your wife. <laughs> or, I accept you, but I reject your body. Doesn't make sense. But sometimes you behave like that. One day one brother came to me and started to complain about the church. Because the church is this, the church is that, the church is so, the people are there, but they are proud, they are, okay, brother. You are in risk now. You are speaking about it the pride of Jesus Christ and he's a jealous God. Don't do that. You are in trouble. <laughs> Don't speak negativity against the body of Christ because he will stand it. He's jealous God. Don't speak negativity about the pride of Jesus. 
Many Christians use the church but don't love it. Christian without a church home is like an organ without a body. Today's culture of independent individualism has created many spiritual orphans. People that they don't attach themselves to see the body of Christ. They don't accept it to adapt it to the, the, the fellowship in the church. They go from one place to another and never be happy. People without the spiritual cover is a dangerous place to be. Be part of the body of Christ. Be part of a church. Choose the church to be here and let's work together. Brothers, you are not a body, the body of Christ on your own. You need the others to express that. Together, not separate. We are God. Many Christians who know John 3.16 don't know 1 John 3.16. 1 John 3.16 says, Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. It's so important for us. If Jesus gave his life, he wants us to give it our lives for each other. You will never grow to maturity just by attending worship services and being a passive spectator. Only participation in the full life of a local church builds spiritual muscles. If you want to be mature, be involved. Start to, to serve. It starts to offer to say, I can do something. Help me or give me this opportunity. I want to be a blessing in the church. I want to serve in this church. Over 50 times in the New Testament, the phrase one another or each other is used. We are commanded to love each other, pray for each other, encourage each other, admonish each other, greet each other, serve each other, Teach each other, accept each other, honor each other, be bear each other, burden, uh, bear each other's burdens, forgive each other, submit to each other, be devoted to each other, and many others much of tasks. All that Jesus taught us is to look for one another. We grow faster and strong, stronger by learning from each other and being accountable to each other. We are not just to model God's love by loving each other. We are to carry each together to the rest of the world. This is an incredible privilege we have been given together as a member of Christ's body. We are his hand, his feet, his eyes, and his heart. It's the way that she, the world you know us as a children of God is the way that you love. We are called and commanded to be involved in each other's lives. Don't think that you can close yourselves and say no one can get close to me or know about what's going on to me. If you live like that, you are an organ without God. And doesn't work, it goes to die. A man left the church, and one day his brother came to him, and he was in his house with the fireplace on, and he took one stick from the fire and put it outside, and they start to talk about it, different subjects. And the guy said, But you came here to talk about what? He said, Nothing and he went home. But that guy, when he looked to the stick, was completely cold. And he understood that that brother came to tell him or to show him that without the fellowship, he'll be that. He'll be cold. That is <coughs> The difference between being a church attender and a church member is commitment. 
I, I don't want to make it so much comment because my time is lost. Being a member of this church is it proves you are committed to your spiritual brothers and sisters. God wants you to love real people, not ideal, ideal people. You can spend a lifetime trying to find the perfect church, but you will never find it. And in the day that you find, you damage it. Because you are not perfect. Bear with one another and forgive one another. Is anyone, if anyone has a complaint against another, even a Christ forgive you, 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 so you also must do. If it, Jesus forgive you, forgive others. Bear with one another and forgive one another. If anyone has a complaint against you, forgive. Forgive. What people think of Christ and Christianity is often based upon what they see in us. If the people see unity, love, care in this church, they will come here. They want to be part of this church. And this is our purpose in life as a friend. So, I mean, very, very good. Give me just one minute. If each one of you will give me one minute, I will go to have it. <laughs> as a Christian, we must realize how important it is for us to learn to relate in such a way that we can say to the people around us, Join us. Like it, Paul says, said, be my imitator as I am an imitator of Jesus Christ. And you can do it. Join us. Because there you see love. Because there you know that you will be loved and you go to love a lot of people and grow very much. We don't claim to be perfect but we strive to be authentic. We don't claim to see eye to eye on everything in this church, but we disagree with dignity and grace. We don't claim to be without friction and misunderstanding, but we are committed to unity. We love one another in this place. Join us if you want to play a critical role on a team that is pursuing the most important work in the world. We must show people outside the family of God that the church is the only hope for a high of integrity relational community that it really loves. Let's make Jesus too big to the point that he cannot be denied. And it's going to happen through our unity, through our love, through our relationship. God bless you. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for the way that your Holy Spirit has spoken to us. And we really pray that, we, yes, you help us to be the people that you love, the people who really love and conditionally God as you have loved us. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we open you. Amen. Amen. I just forgot one announcement on the 11th. Tuesday, the 11th.